of new life. It's the promise contained in the miracle of the resurrection. And today, we mark the greatest day in history. It's the day when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and who is now seated at the right hand of God. Jesus, the firstborn over all creation, through whom all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible, invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all created by him and created for him. Jesus, who is before all things and who in him all things hold together. <laughs> it's no wonder we get excited, delighted to celebrate such things together. In a time of almost continuous bad news, it's wonderful to have not just good news, but the best news in all of history today. And I have another very personal reason to celebrate. It was Easter Sunday, 25 years ago, 1997, that I first entered the doors of Tamworth Elam Church, accompanying my older daughter, who was not very well, and wary of a church with a funny name and what it might be about, and with no intention at all of seeking God. But that was of no matter whatsoever, because as I came into this church, I became strangely aware of and moved by God saying to me, Hello, Martin. It's been a long time. I've been waiting for you. And his grace overwhelmed me and reduced me to tears. And my first steps into my new life began. To be honest, it took me some weeks to come to terms with it all, and I marked my 25 years a Christian in June. But I know in God's eyes, he has always known me. And so it's with special delight I stand here this Easter morning. When I was a lad, I used to go to church and help the priest at the altar. I was born into a Catholic family. It's what young lads do. Easter came as the culmination of the 40 days journey of Lent, reminding us of Jesus's 40 days in the wilderness, which in turn echoes the 40 years of the wilderness of the Jewish people led by Moses. And Holy Week, comprising Palm Sunday, Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday and Easter Sunday, was and is still a complex, interconnected series of services and rituals. On Good Friday, the church, which is normally adorned with statues to saints, paintings, candles, religious items, is stripped bare. The altar left utterly empty, statues and paintings covered in sheets like grave shrouds, and left in darkness, not a single candle is burning. And when that last light went out, the church enters the only time in the year when there is no light flickering in the building. Saturday is totally silent. The church open but void until midnight when the congregation gather to mark the beginning of Easter. Shrouds were removed. The priest dressed in white, symbolic of the church being the bride of the risen Christ, and a single candle is lit in the darkness, passing from hand to hand to light further candles, one for every person, until the room is ablaze in light. It was and is indeed a powerful, symbolic enactment of the resurrection moment. And yes, as a youngster, up in the middle of the night, it was a magical, mystical experience. But... In some ways, the focus on the mystical and the religious rituals reinforced a sense of distance between me and God and any promise of personal resurrection. I was an imposter, an observer, sorry, with imposter syndrome, participating, but not really sure what I believed or what it all meant. In contrast, the gospel writers tell a story that is intensely down to earth and personal 
Mary's encounter with Jesus, thinking he was the gardener, imploring him, Sir, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him and I will go and get him. The walkers on the Emmaus road who fail to recognise him. Thomas, who refuses to believe that Jesus is alive until he's able to physically touch the scars. And that breakfast on the beach, bread, fish and forgiveness. Men and women just like us, caught up in the resurrection story. But focusing only on the events of those days can separate us from the resurrection promise in another way. The story stays in the distant past, a Middle Eastern landscape, a Jewish culture under Roman occupation, fishing and farming, the past, not the present. But the promise of Easter is far deeper still. The resurrection of Jesus reverberates and rolls through time, not as a fading echo, but as a powerful, transforming force, containing not just bright hope and the promise for tomorrow, but a new and abundant life for today. Let's fast forwards three years or so from that first Easter morning. A certain Pharisee amongst Pharisees is headed towards Damascus, hunting for followers of the way, the name by which believers in Jesus were known before they were given the name Christians. His goal is their imprisonment and execution, any steps necessary to stamp out this rogue Jewish sect. But on that road, he is blinded by light from heaven and thrown to the ground where he hears the voice of Jesus speak directly into him. For three days Saul lies in darkness until Ananias, a faithful follower of the way, comes at the request of Jesus to lay his hands upon him, give him back his sight and commission him as the apostle to the Gentile world. Saul is indeed spiritually resurrected into a new life as a man of faith and mission. Paul, as he now became known, in the many letters that he wrote over the following 30 years as he travelled across the Roman Empire, testifies again and again to this dramatic, transformative resurrection encounter, the moment when the Holy Spirit came alive within him. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Colossians 1.27 God chose to make known how great are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory. And Ephesians 2. 4 to 6. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loves us, even when we were dead in our sins, made us alive together with Christ. By grace we have been saved. He raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places. What Paul is telling us is that spiritual resurrection and rebirth begins at the moment a person recognises that Jesus Christ is Lord and that, in the words of John, in 1 John 4.15, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. Paul's letters make clear that this new abundant life is for all, a life as a child of God, and that this new life is available to everyone. It's the gift of grace from God through faith, and we are a resurrection people. Jesus' resurrection is not only about life after death, though it certainly is about that. It is also the doorway to an abundant life in the here and now, a life lived in the power of the Holy Spirit by grace through faith in Christ, a life where within us God's kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven, as we look to love and serve the world and worship God. Furthermore, we are a resurrection people not only because we are born to a new spirit-filled life when we come to faith, but through Christ we are resurrected afresh every time we turn to Jesus for forgiveness and we fail to do what Jesus would want us to do and when we choose our way, 
not his, which happens a good deal if we are honest with ourselves, and as John insightfully reminds us. As we turn back to him with repentant hearts, our forgiveness is total. Sins are wiped away, and we are once again as white as snow in the eyes of the Father. Resurrection upon resurrection. And Easter is a remembrance of the most important miracle of all, by which we have been saved. The key moment in history, the doorway into a new spirit-filled life, and the sublime confirmation of the new covenant in Christ. The promise of new life, our resurrection invitation, is always extended towards us, always open, and the invitation to become a child of God is offered to all who want it, in the here and now, not by anything a person may say or do, but directly by the work of the Holy Spirit in the moment. The invitation I unexpectedly accounted on Easter Sunday 1997, the same invitation here today. <laughs>